Making sure you correctly identify the turbo will save you the time, trouble and expense caused by receiving an incorrect unit. The best way to be sure you received the correct turbo is to check the nameplate or label on the failed turbo. You may need to remove the turbo from the vehicle to see the plate clearly. The nameplate should tell you at least one of the following. The turbo model. The turbo manufacturer's part number. The vehicle manufacturer's part number. If you can't provide these details, then give them as much information as you can about the application, engine make, size and horsepower, the vehicle's year of registration, and any other facts you think may be relevant. Remember, fitting the wrong turbo can invalidate its warranty. Replacing a turbocharger is easy. If you can fit an exhaust, you can fit a turbo. But remember, the turbo is an integral part of the air, fuel, cooling and oil systems. So check these systems are performing correctly, with the right fluid levels and no leaks or blockages, and replace any failed or suspect parts with OE parts. It's vital to do this before replacing the turbo, or you could risk the replacement turbo failing too. Make sure you follow the instructions included with your turbo. Failing to do this could result in turbo or engine damage and could void the warranty. Check the air intake pipes and the exhaust manifold to make sure they're free from contaminated and loose material so no dirt or debris gets into the turbo openings. Check the oil inlet and oil drain pipes are clean and free from obstructions, internal carbon and sludge. Clean or replace if necessary. Replace the engine oil and filter, remembering to prime the filter. Use only OE standard parts and the specified oil. Do not overfill with oil as it may overpressurize the system, leading to turbo oil seal failure. Check the exhaust mounting flange is flat and free from cracks and carbon debris, and the studs are in good condition. Check the manifold casting is not cracked on the outside or breaking up internally. If in doubt, replace with a new part. Now mount the turbo on the exhaust flange, checking the turbine gasket fits correctly to give a gas tight seal. Never use a liquid gasket product when fitting a turbo as it may enter the turbo openings. Use only OE specification gaskets. Connect the oil drain pipe. Prime the turbo by filling the oil feed hole with clean engine oil using the oil filled injector supplied in the fit kit that came with your turbo. Rotate the rotor assembly by hand to ensure the oil protects the bearings. Lack of oil priming during fitting and incorrect starting procedure can cause premature turbo failure. Connect all other external fittings to the turbo. Make sure the engine oil circulates and the turbo is thoroughly lubricated before it operates under load. For example by disconnecting the ignition system or fuel supply, so the engine turns over on the starter motor without firing up. Check that the oil pressure warning light goes out. Reconnect the ignition or fuel supply and fire up the engine. Run it at a fast idle while you check there are no diagnostic fault codes or oil, air, exhaust gas or fuel leaks. If your turbo has a wastegate or is a variable turbine turbo, it will have been preset at the factory to suit your vehicle. Don't attempt to adjust it. This will compromise performance and void the warranty. The replacement turbo should now provide long and reliable service. <laughs>